here at White PPI, it's more than prop building. It's art, it's craftsmanship. To be able to take raw materials and then turn them into a finished product is an art form. The investment casting is actually one of the oldest processes known to man. It's actually the way the Egyptians used to make their jewelry. They started out making jewelry in a wax, then they put it in a ceramic, and then they melted out the ceramic, put it in a fire, and then they poured the molten metal in it. So it starts off in the wax room, where we take wax pellets and we inject them using a press into aluminum tooling that we actually build here on site. Typically, when we start out in the wax room, we start out with a, uh, an aluminum dye. And we use the aluminum because of its high conductivity. We want the uh, wax, when it's injected, to solidify very quickly. So we have an aluminum dye, however, to control the temperatures. However, the platens on top of the machine are water-cooled so that we can run the wax dyes at a consistent temperature. And what that does is it injects into the dye like a toothpaste. The blades are then welded on, nothing more than a soldering iron. We then use an automotive goop gun with a heat exchanger on it, and we roll that material out to give it the root radius. The parts are then cleaned up and scraped, scraped off, then down, put the pour cups on, on the propellers, which just acts as a funnel. We have a washing station and that washing station is, has a soluble material, it's a citric material, and it etches and it cleans off any of the lubricant from the dye that the guys use. From there, we move it into the dip room, uh, where through a series of different dips, slurries, refactories, uh, different uh, sands, uh, we make a ceramic shell around that wax positive. And you dip it, pull it out, and then it dries. Uh, you put silica sand over it, and it just continues to add thickness to it. We primarily have two different types of refractory slurries. We have a prime material, and it is a, they're both colloidal silicas, but one has um, a zircon flower. It's a 90% zircon flower with a 10% fused silica flower. Then we use a zircon granular. Those are the two prime coats. You eventually do that two or three more times, creating a solid you know, shell. The wax is then melted out in an autoclave. The wax is then transferred and re sent out and to be melted, reused at a later date. Now we put it into the bake-out oven to center it at 1800 degrees for one hour. And then they're pulled out and then stainless steel is molten at 3000 degrees and poured directly into the shell. Now we use 15.5 uh, as our molten metal because it has a 15% chrome it has 5% uh, nickel in it. The shell is cracked off, four cups are pulled off or cut off, Grapes are the gates are ground, the props go through a sandblast uh, process to eliminate any of the residual uh, shell material that's left inside of uh, the logos and inside of the propeller. Then we take them over to the grinding operation, which is you know a lot of the art form, and each grinding operation is unique to a, a specific part of the propeller. And we also do our geometry check where we check the dimension of the propeller to ensure that it meets the Yamaha specs for optimal performance. And all of this is in, takes place to prepare the part and the surface for finishing. So we get that mirror finish. It's a three-step process. The first step is a um, stone ceramic uh, with aluminum oxide in it. The second is a synthetic plastic. And the third is a corn cob that's treated. The final polishing step is a porcelain pin. And then it's essentially in there with just porcelain giving it that final polish. One of the last steps is to get a trail edge grind on it. That's what holds the water. Very critical. It's one of the smallest items on a propeller that gets overlooked. Once we go through that process, now we have a prop that just needs some final inspection. Uh, we do a 100% final QC check, and if there's tweaks that need to be done to be able to put it into spec, we actually have propeller builders that are able to use different mallets and hammers on anvils to be able to tweak the prop to be able to put the propeller into spec so it fits Yamaha standards. And from there, we put it into a box. So the thing with propellers is they're much like tires. Right, A car is no good without tires, and it's the same with boats without propellers. So we have to be able to do our jobs correctly to ensure that the consumer has a great experience on the water with a Yamaha outboard and a Yamaha propeller.